participate in what the Lord is doing here to serve with you at the table of the Lord praise God God is good Acts chapter 3 all right I'm reading from the uh, let me get the new King James since you have that up there I'm reading from the I'll read from the King James version now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful and he was there to ask arms of them that entered into the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple ask arms and Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John said look on us and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something from them then Peter said silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and he took him by the right hand that is Peter took the man by the right hand lifted him up and immediately his feet and bones received strength and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God and all the people saw him and praising God and they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him and as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John all the crowd ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering but Peter let me go down there to the next verse and um, I won't go through all of it but you can read it he says why are you amazed at this or why you look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we have made this thing the God of Abraham come on say with me the God of Abraham Isaac Jacob the God of our fathers have glorified his son Jesus whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate and he went on to say he's the one that did it amen look at your neighbor and say he's the one that's doing it my title today you may be seated my title just want to share with you what the Holy Spirit has put in my heart I want to talk about the gospel lift everybody say the gospel lift Peter and John reached out to the man that was lame and he said silver and gold have I none but such as I have I give unto you in the name of Jesus rise up and walk he reached out his hand and the Bible says he lifted him up you know I thank God for the lift of the gospel I want to share with you something I won't be able to preach all of this I just I've sent the notes here and if you want to you can look at it I'm going to run through that I want to concentrate on just a part of this message because what I'm sharing with you is just something the Holy Spirit has put in my heart that I it's a truth it's nothing new um, but I believe it's it's what I would call the manifesto of a Christian in Jamaica you know uh, PNP put out their manifesto JLP put out their manifesto NDM put out their manifesto hello you talk to dons and kingpins around town if you talk to them they tell you what they want to do Huh? they tell you their manifesto when you go to the bars and people are drinking and them talking 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 you think it's all kind of foolishness they're telling you their manifesto the guys on the street where they're drinking or the gangs they gather together and they say this is what we want and this is going to do and this is who we're going to hurt and this is what we're going to take back and this is that's what they're doing they're putting out their manifesto we have a manifesto that's called the bible come on amen we have a manifesto from our king and I just want to take a little bit of what the king has shared in the Bible concerning the manifesto of the Christian in Jamaica in the 21st century and going forward and I believe today in the message I'm summing it up in just a part of that manifesto in talking about what I call and what I just I titled today the gospel lift 
Look at your neighbor and say the gospel lift. Brothers and sisters, it's not enough that we have beautiful temples that did not change that man's life. It did not change that community. Are you with me? It's not enough that even we have beautiful temples and people can come to the temple. Because here we see this man was at the temple for many, many years. Just because we have people in the temple, just because we have an operating temple, just because we have the temple open, just because the temple is beautiful, just because people are coming to the temple, doesn't mean they're going to be able to get up and walk. We have our temples all year long. We have our temples from, from the beginning of time. But something changed when a man and a, um, two men who had met Jesus whose lives were transformed by Jesus was going into the temple it wasn't the temple that changed the man in fact later on Peter and John even though they were with Jesus for three years they went to seminary with Jesus you could say they went to school with Jesus they went to school of ministry they walked with Jesus they went there with Jesus even though those guys were with Jesus even though they had all of those experiences Peter made it clear to them even though they were baptized by the Holy Ghost even though they were anointed by the Holy Ghost even though Peter was told by Jesus Peter I want you to be a part of the building of the church on the rock of Jesus Christ even when Peter had denied Jesus and Jesus says bring me Peter come back Peter I was wondering what happened to Paul <laughs> thank God he didn't say fly away Peter but he said come back Peter come back to me and be a part of my, 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 my fellowship and what happened Peter said well what about John Jesus said mind your own business come and follow me Peter was special and anointed to God but even those guys who were anointed who walked literally with God what did they say don't look on us huh what did they say don't look on us it wasn't through us or our power why this man was made whole he said it was through Jesus the power of Jesus the revelation of Jesus There's no name higher than Jesus. Kings have come and kings have gone. Rulers have come and rulers have gone. Political parties have come, have gone. Gangs have come and gone. Armies have come and gone. But how many of you would put your hands together for Jesus? He lives on. His kingdom reign. His kingdom will always reign. He will always lift people. He will always transform people. He will always make a way when there was no other way. Oh my Lord Jesus is not like uh, Adah, uh, like Allah or Muhammad or Buddha or some of these men who will send their pawns into the fight. Say you go get killed. I will be over here and when you're done being king I'll ride in on my horse and then you can crown me king. He's not like Napoleon or like other people. He himself died on the cross. Hallelujah. He was at the tip of the spear my friend. There's not a problem that Jesus won't run in ahead of you. There will never be a crisis that Jesus will not already be there before you get there. I'm here to tell you that Jesus will cause all things to work together. Anybody experience what I'm talking about? Even before the death happened, Jesus was there to bring comfort. Even when you lost that thing, Jesus was there to restore it to you. Even before the devil throws his punch, Jesus is ready to bring healing to you. Jesus I remember as a young boy growing up my mother grew up here in St. James she just seven, celebrated a 78 year old last year Bishop she traveled to Cuba and you know when you read in, in the Revelation about Smyrna, uh, uh, Smyrna and all those churches there in Revelation she actually visited those churches in Turkey and Romania last year on a mission trip Every year for the last three years, she has done mission trips. 78 years old. Come on, give God praise. Why? Because my mother and I, and Betty's mother, we can tell you that there is such a thing called the gospel lift. The gospel will lift you out of poverty. The gospel will lift you out of ignorance and lack of knowledge. The gospel met my mother when she left 
St. James because my grandmother had 12 children and as we always do in our family, sometimes we send one of them off with a better off relative to, to get an opportunity in life. So she went with my uncle, with her uncle, who had a business and a shop in Kingston. So we had a restaurant and a bar down there, down close to Luke Lane, if you know much about Kingston. And my, my father met my mother there at, because she was working in the bar, working in the restaurant. She was doing everything. And they met, they became a couple, and uh, she, I got married. I mean, not married. They were, they were never married. I was just born. <laughs> Amen. They met together, and they did the thing that people don't talk about in church, Pastor. And, uh, and here I am. Here I am. And then, after I was born, my uncle and my mother moved to Yala, St. Thomas. And there was a church there called the City Mission Church, Port uh, poor man's corner in poor man's corner south of pentecostal city mission church which is the church i grew up in where i got saved i got discipled in the ways of god and i tell people anywhere i go in the world that the lot of the roots of faith that i still benefit from i learned from sister maud sister barrett my sunday school teachers at south of pentecostal city mission church i'm telling you sunday school matters huh come on amen Sunday school is important and so but my mother wasn't saved when we moved to Yalas and then one day she went to the church and she was outside sitting watching and the pastor came off and pointed her out and said God has a plan for you not long after she came to know Jesus and she pulled me her son into church in fact you know how I got baptized pastor I woke up one morning and I saw a white shirt and my mother said you're getting baptized today <laughs> <laughs> huh? somebody said when I was growing up I had a drug, pro a drug problem my mother drug me to church and drug me to Sunday school and drug me to convention and drug me to concert and huh? that's a good drug problem but my mother began to believe that God had a better plan for my life I remember when I was graduating from high school as a young kid at that time and you know I had all the passes and all the subjects to go to university and my I had an opportunity at that very same time to go on a work scholarship to go to Bible school now I'm a single child I didn't even do toilets and all that kind of stuff and then I'm gonna to go to work scholarship and they want me to do toilet and vacuum so that was a major crisis come on amen so I'm saying to I'm, I'm my all my relatives many of my relatives are saying to my mother send the boy to UA go back you need to go to school because it's your only picnic when you grow up you want to be able to have somebody to take care of you and my mother I will always be thankful to her she came to me and she said what is God telling you to do she said what is what what is God telling you to do because she recognized that our children are not our own as parents we are called to steward God's purposes in our children our children are not our retirement benefits oops sorry about that huh? our children are gifts from God to be raised up to fulfill its purpose and if you do what the Bible says in Proverbs cast your bread on the water it will come back to you after many days I'm here today, we have a great relationship with my mother, but I'm here to tell you, my mom, she, I have to tell her to slow down when she's driving, 78 years old. She is like a pastor for the whole, she lives in, in, in Florida, an area of Florida called Port Charlotte. She blesses everybody, knows, and ministers to people. But I'm here to tell you that this was someone who came out of school at ninth grade, could hardly read and write. She... She sacrificed a lot and ignored a lot of teasing. You know, she had red hair and freckles like me. Well, I used to have red hair. Now it's something is happening. But uh, she had red hair, freckles. And, and, and people used to tease her. Because sometimes, you know, if you don't look like other people, they think you're dunce. They think you don't have no sense. She had to go through all of that. I remember when she came to Caribbean Christ of the Nations, she actually worked for her son. I was the director and she was working for me. I looked up one morning, I, one day I was teaching in my class, and she was sitting in my front row of my class, um, Life and Teachings of Christ. She was one of my students. 
How many know that was my best year teaching? I mean, I was perfect. I mean, I was good. <laughs> she was on the front row, but I was so humbled. My mother did two years at Caribbean Christ of the Nations. She went on to another year, um, and then she went to the same Bible college I went to in Dallas, did another two years. She has done enough to get more than a bachelor's degree, and she's been, she's been a minister of the gospel. Come on, give God praise for Patricia Waite. Her life is a testimony of what we call gospel lift. Just this Christmas, you know, um, she had... You know, she's living overseas, she has traveled back and forth, and she has lost track of all those different certificates. We found those certificates in a bag, we put them all together in a Christmas thing, and we didn't tell her. So in Nashville, this year, one of our ch uh, couple of our children live in Nashville, Tennessee. So we all came together in an Airbnb, and we had Christmas together, about eight of us. Betty's mother, my mother, our four children, and us. And we could open up that bag and remind her and show her those certificates and we were all amazed that this woman who could hardly read and write at nine after the leaving grade nine working in a bar and a restaurant today she had all those subjects and all the things she has done and all she's preaching around the world I have sons in, of the, in the faith literally all over the world that's the gospel lift when you feel lame and you feel like you cannot do anything and when people look down on you and even though you are at the church how many know you can be at the church and not experience in the church you can be at the building and not experience in the king in the building you can be close by and not have it within you in the old days the holy spirit will come upon people but today the holy spirit is indwelling people my friend, you can have a touch, you can jump, you can scream, you can spin around, you can be shake, you can speak in tongues, but that's not all that the Holy Spirit is all about. You shall receive power to be a witness for Jesus. God wants your life and my life to have a testimony of gospel lift. God wants you and I not just to shake, bake, and talk about the Holy Ghost. He wants you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He wants you to experience the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants when the beginning of 24 begins, by the end of 24, you'll be able to get up and give a testimony like what my sister and talk about. To say, this is where I was, this is where I am today. Look at how the gospel lifts me up. Bishop, I see some people in our nation today almost positioning themselves opposite to the church. I hear some people in political, the way they talk, as if they have an agenda for the development of the country, and the police have an agenda for the development of the country, the soldiers have an agenda for the development of the country, the political directorate, which I don't use that term because it's really not a political directorate, people who serve in politics are servants of the people, not directors of the people. Huh? There's no such thing as political directorate. Those who serve in the area of politics, honorable service, it's our servants. But we have those who serve, and I honor them. If any of you do that, God bless you. We, we are with you. But understand that you are not a director, you're a server. And so those who serve, they also have a plan for the development of Jamaica. And in sometimes in some of our meetings, and sometimes we talk to people, it's as if... The soldier's plan is different from the police plan, different from the political leader's plan, different from the church's plan. It's like the church, I do them thing, we I do free with thing, this one I do for them thing, and then we come to church and say, Pastor, pray over it. But I'm here to tell you that the kingdoms of this earth have become the kingdom of our Lord. And particularly because in our country, we have already made that decision. That's why we have a constitution like we do. We don't need to fight the fight we've already fought. Hello? We have an anthem that is a prayer to God. Is that right? We have a pledge that is a declaration that Jamaica may under God. Under God. Come on, say under God. So I want us as Christians to change our thinking here. We need to recognize that we have a manifesto and every other group must find their, mani their, their purpose underneath the manifesto of Jesus Christ. 
Not the church doing one thing over here and you only know what they are doing because, oh, i sorry, Pastor, I forgot to call you. Huh? So that Jamaica may what? But the problem, brothers and sisters, is that we, even as a Christians, we think of the kingdom of God in isolation from what they're doing in the police. We think of the kingdom of God in isolation in what's happening in politics or parish council. And we think in isolation of what's happening in the economy of the country. We think in isolation. We think about the kingdom of God, about I am getting ready. I know this church don't do that, but I know some places do. I am getting ready to go to heaven and rest. So the church is about the future coming of Jesus. So many of us in the church think that way. But I'm glad that I'm in a church that doesn't believe that. I thank God for the theme, Bishop, that I hear, which is that united in the kingdom agenda. Come on, push some of this. We are united in the kingdom agenda. I want you to understand that what you're saying and what you're declaring and what you're believing is biblical. It's not something new. But we have lost it by large. We have forgotten it. And for some of us, it almost feels like we are doing something strange and different. But this is the way it ought to be. The earth is not going to be the Lord's. The, Lord, the earth is what? Is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. So here we see that this man and this nation and our communities and our families and our lives we we lay down and just because we sing some christmas songs we pray at the beginning of our government meetings and we have devotions in our school which we have to keep fighting for we do all these different things we are close to the temple but it's not just being religious it's about following the principles of jesus Bishop, you said this this morning and I wrote it down. The prince of darkness is a prince of ignorance. This morning you said accurate knowledge about the kingdom of God damages ignorance fatally. Huh? That's powerful. That's liberating stuff. I believe in terms of our Christian manifesto, these are some reasonable expectations that we can have of our lives while we are living today until the coming of Jesus. These that I want to mention to you are expectations we should not just have when he returns. I believe these are expectations we should have of ourselves. We should have them about our children. We should have them about our community, about Mount Salem about Rose Green, wherever you live, Rose Heights or, 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 or Salt Spring, or wherever you live, these expectations, I'm going to show you in just a minute, are biblical. And I believe these expectations ought to be taken personally. And I want to say, if somebody comes to you to ask you for your vote, you need to ask them how they line up with these expectations. You need to know how they line up with the mandate of the kingdom of God. Hello? Hello? And this is not an exhaustive list. This is just a small amount. I'm not even going to go deep into them. I just want to give you some scriptures. But I believe mothers should have these expectations for their sons. Sons should have these expectations for their sisters. This is how we are to expect for Jamaica in the 21st century going forward until the coming of Jesus. I am not one of those preachers who believe that the devil wins. You know, Bishop, I, I was really shocked the other day when I read somewhere in the magazine about Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Anybody remember what happened there? They dropped some nuclear bombs on them, right? I thought those places never existed. But then I read they were planting flowers and they were building houses in Nagasaki. I, I said, I thought nuclear power was the end of the world. It turned out it's not the end of the world after all. Jesus is the end of the world. There are no bombs, there are no power of military might that will ever destroy the earth. Jesus will do it when he's ready. Jesus is, come on, somebody ought to give God praise. 
people's knees are knocking and their teeth are grinding and they're worried about superpowers and super countries and oh I talk to young men and some of them say well brother the system won't let me do it or the man won't make my business happen some of you here you have ideas for business that will transform your family some of you have called into ministry but you're afraid to do it because you're afraid somebody will be jealous of you and kill you can I tell you today in the kingdom you're already dead them can't kill a dead man come on amen get a hold of the revelation if any man be in Christ He's a new creation. Colossians 2, 2, I am crucified. Galatians 2, 20, I am crucified in Christ. I'm already dead. Look at your neighbors, I'm already dead. That's the kingdom life. Number one expectation, I believe Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. Our sister read it earlier on. In Luke chapter 4 verse 19, Jesus spoke very clearly that those who have received the anointing of the Holy Spirit will no longer be blind. Is that right? He said, let me, re let me get there and read it uh, just to highlight it. I'm not going to go deep into it. He says, Jesus said, the Spirit is up, Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring the gospel to the... The kingdom is about poor people recognizing they're poor but receiving gospel for being wealthy. Not just rich, but having wealth. That's the will of God. Come on, amen. So that's an expectation. Look at your neighbor and say, that's an expectation. expectation. Not to be poor anymore. Then it says also, deliverance or healing for broken hearted. Come on, say, that's an expectation. Not to be broken hearted anymore. Come on, amen. Here's another expectation. The expectation is deliverance from captivity. Come on, amen. I expect to be free from anything that will try to confine my life and confine my purpose. I'm a free, free man. Come on. Thanks, Jesus. Come on. Say thank you, Jesus. How about this one? I have sight for everything. I have insight. I have foresight. I have access to wisdom. Why? Because he has come to give sight to the blind. Come on, amen. amen. Oh, my, my, my. And I love this one. It says bruise. You know, Satan brings all kind of trauma in our lives. Huh? You know, my mother was bruised when, as, a, as a young woman when my father didn't show up. And some of us, are, our mothers are like that. You probably were in a relationship, an illicit relationship, an ungodly relationship when you were young. And, and then you block out marriage out of your life. You say, we're not married no more. I'm here to tell you, you may open up that door. Come on, get ready for marriage. Come on, even if you're 70, 60. You know, I tease my mother all the time, you know. I said, just get ready. Come on, amen. Just, you never know. Because guess what? The Lord heals the bruise. Huh? That's the kingdom. And then here's another one. The, the, the kingdom is acceptable. I can come into the kingdom. Every year is acceptable. It's not like one year becomes, you know, less and less acceptable. More and more I can in, come into the kingdom. Luke chapter 4, 16 to 19. Matthew 28, 16 to 20 tells me that God wants to disciple the nation. Pastor, Bishop, I can expect that Jamaica may under God be developed discipling the nation discipling the nation is not just discipling Christians but it's discipling Christians who are in positions of influence who act like Christians who run their businesses like they're a Christian who treat their employees as if they're Christians come on are you with me that's what it means to disciple the nation. Disciple the nation doesn't mean you have a Christian party. Hello? That's not what it means. Disciple the nation means the Christians in the nation become salt in every area of society. How many know we can expect that? Huh? You see, I talk to some Christians, you know, and they, they actually expect everything to get worse. I know there are some prophets that's prophesying Montego Bay is going to be destroyed and all of Jamaica is going to be destroyed. But I'm here to tell you that God has not finished with his word yet, his, his work yet. 
I'm believing, my friend, that we're going to disciple the nation. That's what we are called to. Your best days are ahead of you. Look at your neighbor and say, your best days are ahead of you. John chapter 8, verse 32 said, you, you, uh, you shall know the truth and the truth will what? So I, I, I expectation for freedom. Come on, just sort of move yourself. Freedom is my portion. I, I just believe, I expect for freedom. That's my expectation. Come on, amen. First Corinthians 3, verse 17, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Come on, say, I, liberty is my expect. I, I just expect liberty. I just expect liberty. Don't, don't tie me down. Don't be a captive. Don't help me captive. Um, how about First Corinthians chapter 13? Unconditional liberty. I just expect to love you and for you to love me. You know, I go, I meet people, I don't expect them to be, be, I don't go in, some of us, and we're good at that in Jamaica, you know. We want to test everybody out. We want to pre them out and try them. No, no, no. The Bible says walk in forgiveness. Everybody go like this, your head. Your forehead is in the beginning, right? So in other words, you enter into relationship with an attitude of forgiveness. You don't expect the worst. You love people because God got your back come on amen i can love you because god will protect me come on amen Uncondi that's what i expect i expect i don't expect people to get meaner and meaner i expect people to be more and more loving next i, I love jeremiah 29 1 to 10 i'm not going to read all of it you got to look at it i'm just giving you these scriptures in jeremiah chapter 29 the lord we know verse 11 says god says i know the plans that i have towards you plan of good and not of evil but i want you to go early in that chapter and it says you need to buy houses hello he says you need to marry and give your children in marry come on he says when you pray for the peace of the city then the city will be blessed so he says since christians you need to be involved in the community where you're in acts chapter 1 verse 8 he says you will receive power i expect to have power to do whatever god wants me to do revelation chapter 21 you read the entire chapter there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth i'm not focusing on the destruction of the old earth i am focusing on the revelation of the new heaven and the new earth it's okay the old must pass away but the new is coming the wicked will be judged but not the righteous i'm not looking for the undertaker i'm looking for the upper taker I'm not looking as a victim. I'm a victor. So in Revelation chapter 21, listen to this. It says, all the nations will bring their glory into the new Jerusalem. I'm telling you, whether it's going to be reggae music, whether it's going to be your mentor, or whatever we're going to be, we're going to march in from Jamaica, and we're going to go into that new Jerusalem. And I want you to be with me. Come on, amen. We're going to take a delegation into that new Jerusalem. They're going to come from every tribe. They're going to come from every nation. They're going to come all over the earth, and they're going to bring the glory into the new Jerusalem. We need massive group of people out of Jamaica into that new Jerusalem. What do you say about it? Amen. That's why you got to evangelize. That's why everyone needs to bring one into the new Jerusalem. You don't want to show up in that new Jerusalem and you do, there's no star in your crown. Huh? You don't want to show up before Jesus and you've never won one person to Jesus. Focus on the new Jerusalem. I'm telling you, the future of Jamaica is not more ghetto, is not more crime, is not more killing, is not, it's going to be the kingdom of God manifested in power in every home, in every community, and we're going to learn what that looks like. Come on, amen? I'm going to focus a little bit on this scripture. First Timothy chapter 2, from verse 1 to 5. Before I go there, I want you to know that there's opposition. Opposition to the manifesto. Opposition in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. It's really not people. Say it's not people. Come and look at your neighbor and say it's not people. It's not your ex-wife or ex-husband or ex-girlfriend or former employer or whatever. It's not the other party. It's not people. It's flesh. It's spiritual. 6 and 10. Ephesians 6 and 10. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities. We wrestle against powers. We wrestle against the rulers of darkness. That's in this age. In this age. I, those of you who have lived longer. Stop saying the people today are more wicked than 
back then. Stop saying dancehall music is so dirty. Listen, I listened to some of them old time Mento and Calypso. They were pretty suggestive. And, 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 uh, and, and you got here because somebody was doing something back there. Okay? So, so, but I want you to recognize is there are demons that are influencing people in this age. And what we need to do is target those spirits of this age. There are still demons. The, the problem is not the people. The problem is not the boy with his pants hanging down. The problem is a spirit influence in his heart. Focus on him. Focus on him, not on his pants. Focus on her, not extra. Are you with me? That's how we do that. So um, another one is, is lies. Opposition is ignorance. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. I want to just bring this to you real quickly. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, the Lord tells us what I believe and gives us a key to unlock these things in our lives. Uh, he says, first of all, supplication. Everybody says supplication. Prayers, intercession, giving of thanks, be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority. Then it gives us the reasons why. Why do we need to pray for all men, for kings and for those in authority? See, the manifesto of the kingdom of God stirs our expectation for a better life and a victorious life. He stirs our expectation to be all that God has called us to be. But it doesn't leave us hanging, brothers and sisters. It tells us how to tap into where God is and to pull it into manifestation. And that is done through praying. Everybody say praying. So many of our prayer lives is a complaining to God. So many of our prayer lives is listing out the problems we have today. I believe God wants our prayer lives to identify his will in heaven and to pull it out on earth. Identify what God wants in your life and pull it out into manifestation. Identify your hopes, your dreams, your expectation of yourself, of your family, of your community, of our nation. Identify and pull it out. Through your, vo your voice. It's interesting that in James he says our tongue is like a rudder. It's amazing that when you speak something happens. If your participation was not important. Then Jesus would not have told you that it was important. It's not all up to Jesus. It's not all up to the Holy Ghost. It's not all up to the beautiful temple. It's not all up to the anointing of the preacher. You have a responsibility that just shall live by faith. And the primary way the believer express faith in God is by praying. If you don't pray, you do not have faith. You have faith by whoever you make supplication to. We pick up the phone, we call the leader, we call this one, we call our uncle. We, we're running nervous all over the world. How long have you spent in prayer about that problem? We pray because we believe God can. We pray because we believe God hears. We, believe, we pray because we believe God is for us. You could be a lame man at the beautiful temple all the days of your life. You can sing all the songs you want on Love 101. You can shout all you want until you exercise prayer for the things you're believing for. You're going to stay right there. You have to pray. It's not the anointing of the Johns or the apostles or the bishop that's going to lift you up. It's Jesus. And when he or she gives you the word and you respond to the word, that's when the miracles happen. You know what I love about this gospel? Anybody, anywhere, in any nation, in any tribe, in any com community, in any family can benefit. Anyone can benefit. If you can't read, you can benefit. If you have those subjects, you can benefit. 
If you don't have a sugar daddy, you can benefit. If you have no loan, you can benefit. If nobody believes in you, oh, you can call upon Jesus. So the Lord said, this is a key right here. Anybody can do supplication. Anybody can offer prayers. Anybody can intercede. Anybody can give thanks. Are you with me? But he says, we need to know what we're praying about. Supplication is like begging, beseeching. Prayers is like listing out a request to God. Intercession is when you're standing between somebody and God. You're calling God on the name of somebody else. It's not me, Lord. It's my brother. It's my sister. Intercession. You're interceding. Giving of thanks is already in your prayer. You're already thanking God for what he has already done, even before you see it. But something shocked me that what are we praying for? Everybody look at, the, look at verse 3. What are we praying for? That we may lead a quiet life. But it's a quiet life. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, God wants me to have a quiet life. God wants me to have a peaceable life. God wants me to have a godly life. God wants me to have an honest life. What's your expectation here? Quickly, quickly. What does it mean when you say a quiet life? When you look up the Greek word, you look at the root of that word um, quiet, it means alone. It means uh, separated. It actually means having your own property. That nobody is bothering you. It actually talks about land ownership when it says a quiet life. Just like when you have your land border up to others, you're not living on top of one another. And you don't hear when somebody else cursing and carrying on. But you're quiet. You're able to meditate. Hear the birds. God wants you to have land. God wants his people to buy land. He's challenged me with this. I need to buy land. A quiet life. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants you to have a quiet life. And then he says, he wants you to have a peaceable life. Expect, listen, you and I should expect a peaceable life in our nation of Jamaica. Huh? It means I'm at peace with my neighbor, but not only that, it means that I'm not under debt. I'm not worried. My home is in order. My, my wife is in my bed. My, my husband is in my family. Your children, there's harmony, there's peace. That is the will of God for everybody in the kingdom of God. Don't allow the devil to lower your expectation. Keep it high. Come on, say keep it high. Come on, say quiet life. Peaceable life. Godly life. That's the manifest of the church. That's what the church brings to the people in the nation. Help people to live godly, honest, people of character. People who their yea is yea and their nay is nay. And people who will not break the Ten Commandments. Not because they are Sabbath people. But because they love Jesus with all of their hearts. Come on, are you with me? And then here's another one. God wants to have honest life. Or when you go to the Greek of that, it means God wants to us to have a dignified life. Isn't God good? Huh? These guys running to kill themselves for Allah. They said we are slaves. No, no, no. No, no. We are sons of God. We are sons of God. We make our, we surrender to be servants of God. Are you with me? Look at your neighbor and say, God wants you to have a dignified life. But how do you get there? How do you get that dignified life? Quickly. Look at the beginning of verse 3. Verse 1, it says supplication, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving must be made that we can have a quiet, peaceable, godly, and dignified life. But he said, who we need to pray for? Bishop, I'm here to confess that I've read this scripture so often, and I've led prayer meeting, and I've prayed for kings and all who are authority. But the Lord touched my heart earlier this year and says, you're missing out the most important group. Pray for all men. Years ago, Zig Ziglar used to say, he was a motivational speaker, he said, you're seven persons away from someone who will have a great impact on your life. The person you need to know to open the door is seven persons. Today, with social media and all the different, it's probably one or two persons away. I pray regularly for any person that have anything to do to touch anything concerning my purpose and destiny. I may not know who they are, but I'm praying in tongues and I'm praying for them. We need to learn to pray for all people. What this tells me is that all people are important for you. We don't look down on people. We don't categorize people. We don't only pray for Bishop, uh, for Apostle, uh, for you know, Dr. Peter or whatever. 
we pray for all men all men never say all men when you go down on the taxi or in the news and you hear something write down their names write down the situation and then begin to bring supplication begin to bring prayers begin to give intercession begin to bring thanksgiving and when you begin to spread out your prayer for everybody you come in touch with i'm beginning i'm telling you my friend you'll begin to see god create quietness for you peace for you godly life for you he'll begin to be dignified life for you because he will begin to move those people in alignment with his will we need more people praying for their neighbors we need more people praying for their aunts and their cousins and their brothers and their sisters we need more people praying for the boys in the corners of the street for people they don't like people who hurt them people who abuse them God says pray for all people people hold the key to the transformation of our nation so I, you know, I've always been championing when I was a minister's fraternal, we did an initiative about the four pillars for transformation of our parish and our nation. We need to be loving and caring for one another. We need to build a culture of forgiveness. We need to break the code of silence around crime and criminal activity. And we need to build up marriages. Who? I'm telling you, friends, our government cannot buy enough guns and hire enough soldiers and police that you have to pay the rest of your life because you're gonna have to pay for them by taxes you know that right you know that right you're gonna have to maintain those vehicles you're gonna have to buy more guns you gotta pay their life insurance and if they are killed you're gonna have to pay their wives all their lives hello the transformation of our nation is in the hand of the church and we as a church recognize that there is a manifesto from God and that men and women in this nation must bow their knees and not just sing our anthem they must bow their knees to the lordship of jesus in every area of our society come on amen but we have to start with that as believers we've got to say let the redeemer of the lord say so we need to say it in the boardrooms we need to say it in the classroom we need to say it around the dinner table we need to say it in the newspaper we need to say it on the radio station we as christians are too quiet we need to say so we need to say so come on say say so come on push somebody and say say so there's no king but king jesus there's no lord but the lord of lords but there will always be kings and others unless we say so. Father, I thank you today. I thank you that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you brought us into your kingdom. I thank you, Lord, that you have not just brought us to a beautiful place just to hang around and have church and come in lame and walk out lame and live lame lives and just to go through life and to look at you as a, as a, as a, a booster. You're not a booster. You're the king of kings. You want to transform our lives, transform our marriages, transform our children, transform, transform our nation. You want to do this work of transformation until you return. Use me, Lord. Use us, Lord. As I turn over, I want to ask you today, just stand to your feet, everybody. Just stand right where you are. I've got a, a question I want to ask you. Are you in the kingdom? Are you in the kingdom? I want to ask you, are you expecting out of your life what Jesus is expecting out of your life? Are you willing today to say, Lord, I embrace the manifest of the kingdom of God. I expect, Lord, renew my thinking. There, I, I'm, I'm struggling with some thoughts. I'm struggling with some expectation. I'm, I'm struggling with what the future is going to look like. I'm scared about tomorrow and about the future. I'm scared for my children, my husband, my wife. I'm scared, Lord. I'm asking you to show me what you have for my future and for the future of our nation. Lord, I want to walk the kingdom walk. First of all, those of you who say, I'm not in the kingdom, will you raise your hands all across this place? Because I want to pray for you. I want to invite you to start this journey with Jesus. This kingdom manifesto, he said, first you got to be born again. You got to come in the kingdom, know Jesus. And then this kind of transformation begins in your life. I'm looking across the room. Is there anyone who would want to open their hearts and surrender to the kingship of Jesus today? Just raise your hands. We want to pray for you and settle that.
we are very serious we want you to be lifted up by Jesus thank you sir thank you anyone else thank you God bless you the best decision you'll ever make anybody else hallelujah my brother if you don't mind I had to take the step for Jesus would you come and join me here because I really love to pray for you will, will one of our brothers uh, come come with him come put your hands together for this man that's willing to enter the kingdom to enter the kingdom someone come and stand with him here God bless you sir I saw you listening back there God bless you for opening your heart to Jesus anybody else I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life I want to enter the kingdom I don't want to just come beside the, the temple and be lame I want to get the benefit of the kingdom hallelujah I heard you shouting with earlier have you have you is this your first time or are you are you coming back to Jesus first time okay God bless you sir we will, come on somebody else stand with him we, we just thank God anybody else will make Jesus the Lord of their lives hallelujah praise you Jesus we're going to pray for you hallelujah why don't you just keep praying for them right now just pray for those I want the believers lift your hands and if you say Lord I, I, I want to I want to embrace your kingdom agenda I know Bishop over the next several weeks is going to go deeper and deeper in the things of the kingdom all year long open your heart so Lord I want to be transformed raise your hands come on lift your hand and say say Lord I embrace the kingdom agenda Lord I just don't want to come to the temple I just don't want to hang around the beautiful temple I want I want my life I want my family's life I want my community I want my parish I want my nation I want this generation to be transformed by the power of the kingdom of God in me and through me for your glory Lord Jesus I recognize it's not about me it's about you lift up people lift me up lift me up Lord use me to lift others up for the glory of your name for the glory of your name for you are worthy for you are worthy come on keep talking to him keep talking to him keep talking to him hallelujah oh hallelujah 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 oh Jesus we thank you we thank you we thank you